Tensions in the region unfolding overnight. Ballistic missiles were fired toward a U.S. Navy ship after it came to help a tanker in trouble. Our chief global affairs anchor Martha Raddatz joins us now with more. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, Lindsay. This is an incident at sea involving a hijacked ship pirates and ballistic missiles launched toward a U.S. Navy warship. It began when a commercial cargo ship in the Gulf of Aden made a distress call saying they were under attack from armed men in a small boat. U.S. Central Command says the USS Mason, a Navy destroyer, gave chase as the five attackers tried to flee the cargo ship in a small boat, finally surrendering. Then hours after that initial attack, two ballistic missiles were fired in the direction of the USS Mason from Yemen, where Iranian-backed Houthis operate. The missiles fell far short of the Mason, about 10 miles away, but U.S. ships in the region have been in the line of fire since the war in Gaza began, although this morning it is still unclear whether this attack on the commercial vessel, which is owned by a company led by an Israeli-born shipping magnate, is part of these larger threats coming from these Iranian-backed forces. The U.S. Air Force flew its newest stealth bomber, the B-21 Raider, for the first time in early November. A few weeks later, and a Chinese scientist already claimed China's own stealth fighters can shoot down the B-21. The claim is coming from an associate professor at China's Northwestern Polytechnical University. He led a research team that used computer modeling to conduct a war game between a U.S. B-21 and an as-yet unrevealed Chinese stealth fighter jet with advanced capabilities. In the war game, China's super-secret stealth fighter supposedly has what's known as conformal skin, which allowed the plane to survey the battle space without radar and maintain radio silence. Now, under these conditions, the model showed the Chinese fighter jet could detect the B-21 and take it down with a hypersonic missile that used artificial intelligence to track its target. Even though their war game showed China may be able to down the B-21, the Chinese research team said the ensuing U.S. counterstrike and fight for air dominance would lead to a prolonged and complex battle that could take hours to settle. There's not a whole lot known about the B-21 Raider, other than it's the most advanced stealth bomber ever made. Unlike the previous stealth bombers, the Raider can carry its own air-to-air -air missiles and will fly in formation with AI-piloted craft. Its radar signature is also said to be similar to that of a mosquito. So right off the bat, we should take any claim that the Chinese can track the B-21, let alone intercept it, with a hefty helping of salt. That being said, the claim is not being made in a vacuum, and the Chinese are working nonstop to compete with and eventually surpass the U.S. military in every domain. For instance, we know the Chinese hold a commanding lead in hypersonic missile technology over the United States. China's stealth fighter program is also growing. China likely has more J-20s than the U.S. has F-22s, but the U.S. has far more F-35s than China has J-20s. Fighting China would mean using aircraft carriers, at least to start. The U.S. maintains 11 aircraft carriers across its fleet, the People's Liberation Army Navy, currently keeps up with two. But the PLAN is nearing completion of what will be its third and largest carrier, the Fujian. Like the newest U.S. carriers, the Fujian features an electromagnetic launch system, so larger aircraft with heavier payloads can take off from its deck. Once a ship completes sea trials, it can be commissioned into service. Getting back to China's claim it can down a B-21. We know China is putting the resources in place to hypothetically be able to achieve its claim. This is Panmunjom, also known as the Truce Village. It's a part of the Korean demilitarized zone, the DMZ, the only portion where North and South Korean forces stand face to face. In 2018, it was the setting of historic meetings. On one side was Moon Jae-in, the then president of South Korea. On the other side was Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea. The meetings helped chart the Comprehensive Military Agreement. It was signed that year. The goal was simple, reduce tensions in the peninsula and build trust between the two countries. Of course, it was a lofty goal. Five years later, North Korea has scrapped the deal. It's deploying weapons and soldiers to the border with the South. 
So how did it come down to this? The answer lies in a rocket launch. On Tuesday, North Korea launched the Maligyong-1, its spy satellite. North Korea tried to launch in May and August, but it was unsuccessful. So this was the third attempt in six months. However, this time, Pyongyang claims it was a successful launch. It says the satellite is now in orbit. The launch sent alarm bells ringing on the other side of the border. South Korea was alarmed, so it had to take measures. Seoul suspended the 2018 military agreement. It said it was restoring surveillance activities at the border. Until mutual trust is restored between North and South Korea, we plan to pursue the partial suspension of the effectiveness of the 9.19 military agreement. This is a necessary measure and the minimum defense action required for our national security. Furthermore, it is a justifiable measure in accordance with our laws. Of course, it was a tit-for-tat action, but North Korea decided to take it one step further. They scrapped the deal altogether. Pyongyang said it's sending military and new weapons to the border. So with the deal scrapped, what will the border look like? Many say it won't make much of a difference. They say North Korea wasn't abiding by the deal anyway. But the raked up tensions seem to have worried the citizens of South Korea. The successful launch of the spy satellite means that their technology has improved that much. With the Ukraine and Israel situation also happening, it's quite true that I feel worried that war can also occur if North Korea has their mind set out in a bad way. If North Korea advanced their military while South Korea and North Korea confronting each other, I believe South Korea has to prepare thoroughly as well by having close relationships with the United States and Japan. So, the Korean peninsula is on the boil once again. Military tensions, new weapons and distrust between two neighbours. It's the perfect recipe for a military disaster. But will this just be some political tit-for-tat? Or will this lead to actual military confrontation? Well, no one knows the answer for now. But the world definitely doesn't have the appetite for another armed conflict. Like clockwork, as soon as the Philippine supply mission nears the second Thomas Shoal in the South China Sea, Chinese ships emerge, cutting across their paths. Manila calls them dangerous maneuvers. It has put the lives of our personnel at risk. Beijing says they're lawful and restrained. This Philippine Coast Guard vessel we are on, attempting for a second time to get closer to the second Thomas Shoal. But you can see that Chinese maritime militia vessel already moving to close the opening, as well as the Chinese Coast Guard vessel over there. Our ship weaves its way through. But from afar, we see a Chinese Coast Guard vessel blasting water cannon onto a Philippine supply boat. Confrontations like this have become the norm. Speaking at a forum in Hawaii, Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. described the situation as dire. He accused China of building bases closer and closer to the Philippines and said this has forced Manila to turn to allies and neighboring countries who have overlapping claims for support. We are now in the midst of uh, uh, negotiating our own code of conduct, for example, with Vietnam because we are still waiting for the code of conduct between China and, the, and ASEAN. And the progress has been rather slow, unfortunately. Beijing says it won't honor an agreement separate from the one currently under discussion and defended its activities in the disputed waterway. China's construction activities on its own territory fall entirely within China's sovereignty and other countries have no right to make irresponsible remarks.